Good morning! My name is Allison and I work at Whitfield Wildlife Conservation Area and I'm glad to be with you today. Today is a really important topic and we're going to cover things that you see every day but may not have thought that they play a bigger role when we're thinking about the environment and changes that we see that are going on outside. So before we get started on this lesson, I'm going to need everybody to grab a notebook with probably about three or four blank pieces of paper. And I'll see you back in a few minutes. All right, so now that everyone's had a few minutes to grab your notebook and a couple blank pieces of paper, we're going to talk a little bit about how to track data over time. So as you can see, I labeled mine Nature Journal. And this is where I keep track of anything that I'm collecting in nature, anything that I'm observing, and I look for changes. One of the most important things we can do to understand how our world works is tracking changes. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. So in your notebooks, I'd like everyone to go to a blank piece of paper and write these things down. So first write down what the date is. And the date today for me is October 7th of 2020. So you're going to write down whatever date that it is today that you're seeing this. And then you'll notice the next thing is the time. So you're going to look at a clock, see what time it is. Time is very important, um, whether we're looking at something in the morning or the afternoon or the evening. So you're going to want to mark down, mark down the time. Right now for me, it is 1030 in the morning. And temperature. What is the temperature outside? Well, you can kind of guess if you don't have a thermometer. Um, if you do have one, that'll help tell you the exact temperature, but just try to make a really good educated guess. Um, and I'll um, show you what I have with me to write that down in a few minutes. The last one I have on here is um, called wind speed. Now, one thing you can track wind speed is what I have here with me today. And this is an anemometer. And this will actually track how fast the wind is going. One thing you could do if you don't have this device is you could just put your arms out and feel, is it windy, is it not? And then just write that down. But this little guy will actually track the wind speed for us. And if I hold it up for about 10 seconds, we're gonna see that it's gonna change and right now I have 1.7 miles an hour. Not very fast. So I would write down 1.7 miles per hour is our wind speed. And you can track wind speed every day by either just using your arms, one of these, or creating one of your own. So one way we could check the temperature would be with our thermometer. If you don't have one, remember, you can just guess. But right now it's starting to warm up because we're getting into October where it's cool in the morning and then gets into the 70s and 80s in the afternoon. So if I look at my thermometer right now, it's telling me it's at about 74 degrees, which means it's just starting to warm up. Um, so go ahead and mark down what temperature you think that it would be out wherever you're at today. All right, now that we talked about some of the ways that we can track the things that we're observing, we're gonna get to our topic today, which is going to be weather and climate. And we're gonna talk about what the difference between weather and climate and seasons and why all of those are important when we're learning about the environment. So before we talk about weather and climate, I'd like to mention one more thing to put in your journal, and that is the cloud cover. What is the cloud cover of the day that you're measuring data? So today, I would say our cloud cover, thinking of a percentage, would be probably at a zero. I don't see any clouds in the sky this morning. It's always good to note, to note down if you have clouds or you don't have clouds. Okay, so now I'd like you to turn to a blank page in your journal and write down the word weather, weather. So when you think of the word weather, you may think of rain or snow or something falling from the sky, something happening, right? Wind, maybe even a tornado, even though most likely we won't see those here. Those are all weather events and you would be correct. Weather is something that, hap that happens every day. 
Weather is something that's happening right now. The weather today is sunny, it's warm. That would be what I would describe the weather for today. So weather is something that happens on a daily basis. When you're thinking of climate, you're thinking of change over time. So you're looking at an entire year of weather, an entire month of weather, and you're tracking those changes over a long period of time. So I could say something to you like, at Whitfield, the climate has changed pretty dr drastically in the last 10 years. So the weather at Whitfield changes from season to season. In the summertime, it's warm. In the fall, it gets cooler. And in the wintertime, we may even see some snow. But the climate has changed over the years as well. So when we're talking about groundwater, I wanted to show you one of our wells here at Whitfield. We have 10 of these wells and their purpose is to measure how far underneath the surface the level of water is that is in our floodplain here at Whitfield. And so we have a really, really big measuring tape that we go down and we measure how far. And we've noticed over the last 10 years that that water level depth changes over time and we've also noticed that the largest change is that it getting it's getting lower and lower and lower which means we are getting less and less water and so if you were to take a guess i'd like you to take just a minute and everybody guess how low do you think the water right here would be in our floodplain underneath the ground so you're probably getting guesses or thinking mm, maybe one foot and then sometimes I have guesses maybe 30 feet. Well, the actual number is going to be between six to seven feet depending on the time of year. And I have a really good indication how low that groundwater level is when I look behind me and I see a giant pond this pond shows us where the water is underneath the ground so in order to see that water we had to dig a giant hole in the ground so that tells us where the water is and we know that that water is getting lower and lower every year which would be effect of climate change that we see happening right here at Whitfield. Okay, so now that we talked a little bit about weather and climate and the differences, let's talk about how seasons are change, change things as well. So right now we're getting into fall. And some of the first things we notice with fall are the changing leaves. This is a cottonwood tree. These trees are called deciduous trees, which means that all of their leaves fall off. If you go up into the foothills in the higher elevations, you have trees that are called evergreen trees. And these trees hold their needles all year long. So you can tell right now that these leaves are changing color. So what's happening is this tree is trying to conserve energy, just like we do. And by doing that, it drops its leaves. In the springtime, these trees will all get green again and it'll look like nothing happened. And this is its way to survive and to save its energy in the winter time. So right now we have a bird that's migrating in called the Sandhill Crane. The Sandhill Crane migrates here because it comes from Canada where it's really, really cold and actually comes to places like New Mexico to warm up in the winter, even though it feels cold to us. To the cranes, the temperature feels really, really nice. And in about March or early April, all of those cranes will head back to Canada 
where it'll be a little bit cooler for them for the summertime months. Bears and, and bunnies. And even some reptiles like snakes like to hibernate in the wintertime to save energy. And the funny thing is, the snakes will actually hibernate in the same holes in the ground that the rabbits will hibernate in. And they don't eat the rabbits in the wintertime because they don't have enough energy to do that. So in the summertime, a lot of animals eat a lot of food to save up their energy for the wintertime. So there's a lot of changes that happen with seasons, whether we're getting warmer or we're getting colder, and our environment has to adapt to these changes of the seasons. Okay, so to sum up what we've talked about today, we first talked about important ways to track data in our nature's notebook or in any notebook. We talked about the importance of observation of things as they change over time. We talked about how different seasons ha um, have plants and animals that do certain changes over time. We talked about how weather is something that happens every day and how climate is kind of a big change over time of really big events that we notice between plant and animal life outside in our environment. So what we're going to do today is we're gonna start to track some things that you see today right outside of your house or school. So you're gonna need two blank pieces of paper. On the first blank piece of paper, what you're going to do is you're going to write down the time and the date and the cloud cover and the temperature, whether you have to guess or you have a thermometer to tell you what the temperature is. And if you have the time to make your own anemometer or if you have an anemometer, or if you just wanna feel how windy it is outside, I'd like you to track the wind speed that's happening right now, today, where you're at. So once you mark those important changes, I'd like you to go outside and draw a plant and the changes that the plant is going through. So if you're drawing a plant in winter time, you're going to draw a plant most likely without its leaves or flowers. If you're drawing a plant in the summertime, those plants will have their leaves and flowers and be green. If you're drawing a plant now in the fall, make sure to note the plants that are changing their leaves to yellow and then eventually falling off those, plant, those trees and shrubs. So once you do all of those changes, I'd like you to then on a separate sheet of paper, think about if we didn't have seasons. So what you're gonna do is you're going to imagine that it's always cold outside and the leaves are never on the trees because it's too cold. I want you to write two sentences that would explain the big changes that would happen in the environment if it was always cold. How would that affect our plant life in one sentence and how would that affect our animal life in the other sentence? And you'll really see how important seasons, weather, and climate are to our environment. So something you can do for the long term is start collecting data daily or monthly of the different changes that you see around your schoolyard or in your backyard. And that'll help you see how those changes are important in our environment. So I hope you enjoy this activity today and I can't wait to catch up with you soon to see your drawings and to see what your thoughts are on climate, weather, and seasons. See you soon.